Hey everyone, I'm Carl from studywebdevelopment.com. Today I want to discuss a topic that's very important to web designers and developers, and that is how to charge for a website. Firstly, before I even get started, I know my accent may sound a bit strange to some of you. <laughs> I'm from South Africa, but I'll try and speak a bit clearly so hopefully everyone can try and understand what I'm saying. Secondly, this is a big topic I'm covering. It's not that simple or straightforward, and I'll lead into the main question towards the end of the video of delaying the foundation. So if you expect a good answer to how to charge for a website immediately, and you are not willing to watch the whole video, this is probably not for you. Now with that out of the way, this is an overview of what I'll be discussing with you. Understanding the basics of this question, what almost every developer does wrong, a prediction I have, how and why most developers undercharge for a website, sending proposals or quotes to prospective clients, how to charge for a website, the real answer, and common questions I get about this topic. Let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is lay the foundation. The best way to do that is to make it simple to understand. Let's start with some examples. Example 1. You want to buy a leather sofa. How much does a leather sofa cost? Example 2. You want to buy a car. How much does a car cost? Example 3. You want to buy a house. How much does a house cost? Can you see where I'm heading with this? The reason why each of these examples don't make sense is because the question is too broad. You need all the information first before knowing how much it will cost. For the sofa, would you like synthetic leather, top grain leather, uppers, full grain leather, what color? For the car, would you like a sedan or an SUV, a four-seater or two-seater, new or used? For the house, how many rooms would you like? Which area would you like to stay in? Now, with that in mind, how much does a website cost? I find that too many developers are quick to say X amount for a 5 page website or X amount for a 20 page website with just the basic information from the client. This pricing model frustrates me to be honest. It frustrates me because the developers have not been educated on how to price their services and to get paid what they are worth. Forget about what others charge for a second year and just think about it. You are potentially changing someone's business for the better and you are happy to just get paid a small amount for it and then to work so hard just to make a small to average income and then to start over again next month. If that's you, or if that's how you think, I hope I can persuade you to think differently about this by the end of the video. When I first started out and wrestled with the practical side of how to price a website, I thought a website costs as much as I am willing to accept and as much as the client is willing to pay. It needs to be cheaper than everyone else for the client to go ahead with it, or this is at least what I thought a few years ago. Let's move on to an important topic for a few seconds. My prediction is that as technology and artificial intelligence advances, the demand for developers to create websites will decrease. And just as a side note, I'm not talking about very advanced websites, I'm just talking about the small to medium sized businesses. With more and more drag and drop software available, it's becoming a lot easier for business owners to just create websites themselves. The AI technology will eventually lead to what I call speak and create software, whereby the business owner could speak to their version of Siri and say something like, Siri, create three choices of a luxury watch e-commerce website for me based on the best conversion tactics to get the highest return on investment. Pull the data from the watches folder and connect it with the leading payment gateway on the market. Make sure it's linked to www.watchdomain.com and add social media profiles as well. Now, either I'm a bit crazy or there's a slight chance that this may become a reality. Just as a side note, there are actually a few tech companies working on this right now. 
If and when this does become more widely adopted by business owners, the commodity market, and by this I mean the web developer market who creates websites under $1,000, will become more and more redundant, and those who position themselves as experts in a particular industry would always have their share of clients. Whether this theory is true or not, the principle still holds true. Take a look at this chart in the next slide. I just want to point out the use of the internet and look how it has grown from 52 to 88 percent and 88 percent is already two years ago. There are two things I want to mention about this data. Businesses who are not online will realize they need to be online. Businesses who are online but don't take it seriously will start taking it more seriously. Takeaway number one. Businesses will need developers to help them create or improve their websites. Takeaway number two, be the go-to person in a niche that businesses come to for the solution. I want to discuss a very important point here and that is the fact that many developers think if you use a WordPress theme or if you buy a cheap template from ThemeForest that it determines the price you can charge the client. Just because you are coding a website from scratch and it takes you two weeks where you might be able to buy the whole website for $50 does not make it more valuable. Your client is simply a business and what do businesses want? They want more sales. If you can keep focused on the outcome, the smaller details like if it takes you a few days to create the website, the colors you'll use and things like that become secondary. Now I know it may seem we are moving slowly and things might still not fully make sense to you yet, but these next few slides will help put everything into perspective. Let's move on to the fact that most developers undercharge for websites. Do you know that there are many people who charge 20k, 30k, 50k and upwards for websites? Have you ever thought about how they can close deals at that price? This is what they do differently. They don't position themselves as a commodity, but rather as an expert. They write winning proposals. They bundle their services like development and online marketing services. They communicate effectively. They add value to the project and over deliver. They charge a premium price for a premium service even though it could be done much cheaper by someone else. The next important thing to consider is a mind shift change. What you are selling is not a website. You are selling a solution which gets the business more customers and to increase their profits. I don't care whether it's a coffee shop, a consulting business, an e-commerce store or a blog. The ultimate goal is to create something that gets the business more customers and to increase profits. There are three things I want to mention about this. Which country you live in is not important here. You don't need to live in the US to earn a high income. I know many people in India, Indonesia and Philippines who earn over $15,000 per month which is well above a good income there and even in the US for that matter. So if they can do it, it can be done. You just have to see what they are doing right. The degree you have is also irrelevant, especially when it comes to freelancing. Some of the most successful developers out there don't have a degree behind their name. And personally, I've also dropped out of high school without finishing my final year. So the bottom line is, it's got nothing to do with the qualifications you have. Then I know there's a chicken here and there's actually no reason for it. I just thought it looked cool. So with that chicken note, let's move on. This next section is very important to understand. We've got two freelancers here. Freelancer A knows Java, Ruby, Node, Angular, PHP, React and so on. Freelancer B knows HTML and CSS. The question is who earns more here? In a job context, freelancer A would almost certainly be earning more than freelancer B. But when it comes to freelancing, is this also true? Short answer, maybe or maybe not. Why? 
Freelancing is more than just what coding language you use. It's far more important to focus on things like business growth, pricing your services, getting clients, additional income streams, creating effective websites, writing proposals that convert, handling common objections, and other important aspects. In fact, my coding knowledge is pretty average, but my strengths are the points mentioned above, which is what has helped my freelancing business grow. The bottom line is if you just know the basics, such as HTML and CSS, you can learn the other factors that contribute to a successful freelancing business. You don't need to know as many programming languages as possible. It's important to have programming knowledge as it's a necessary skill to have, but it shouldn't be the main core focus. It's vital to have knowledge and skills that will help you become a more well-rounded and in-demand developer as well, such as the points mentioned above. If someone asks you, what do you do for a living? What do you say? Most people say things like, I'm a web developer, or I create websites. This is not what you should say. Why? What's wrong with saying this? This is basically what every person, including your seven-year-old cousin after coding for one week says. It limits you to the commodity market and it limits you to their price range. When someone asks you what work you do, say something like this. I do business transformations. Or I create websites that work. Or I help medium to large businesses boost or increase their online sales. Now I know that this is a bold and somewhat overly confident claim or statement to make, but this is a great starting point to the discussion. The reason why this is more effective is because the two main questions that generally follow are, what do you mean by business transformation? Or what do you do that works? These questions open up a dialogue of more opportunity and it shows you are different. This is much better than a reply like, oh, that's great, my niece is also learning how to create websites. One often overlooked aspect of pricing is sending the prospective client your proposal or quote. Rather than going into detail about the right way to prepare your proposal, I'm going to give you a free copy of the proposal I use, which is also from my freelancing bundle that I sell. All you need to do is email kyle at studywebdevelopment.com with the subject line proposal template and I'll send you the free copy. Please make sure that the subject line says exactly the words proposal template as I might need to create an autoresponder for this. This proposal template will help you change the way you approach clients so email me if you'd like a copy. One thing we always hear is to target a niche. This is something that is incredibly valuable and it can influence the way you position yourself and how much you price your services. I'm going to ask you two questions. Do you want clients coming to you? Do you want to work less and earn more? If you answered yes to these questions, you need to do these three things. Number one, find a niche. Number two, position yourself as an expert in that niche. Number three, offer services to clients only within that niche. Here is a practical example. I choose the niche chiropractors. I create a website all about chiropractors, the market as a whole, and what they could be doing to improve sales and get more clients. I then offer web development services, SEO, AdWords and other digital marketing services only to the chiropractor niche. Now just picture for a second if this was you and you had to give a proposal to chiropractor companies from your business, let's say Chiro Web USA, which is just a random business name, versus someone who just does websites for every single niche and industry out there and who can try and get any client coming their way, what do you think will happen? You will instantly be seen as a professional in the industry. You will close many more deals compared with someone who just does websites for everyone. You can charge a premium price. Because you know the industry well after doing a lot of research, 
you are able to create websites faster and offer the services quicker and more effectively compared with other developers. I know I've oversimplified it here, but I'm not talking fluff. This strategy works much more effectively than just doing websites for every niche out there. The reason I mention this is because this strategy directly affects how much you can charge for your projects, your conversion rate of getting clients, and the hours worked on the project. Now let's move on to the big question. How much to charge for a website? The main thing you need to do is to figure out how much the site is worth to the business and base your price off of this using the potential annual sales increase figure. Here is a practical example. Let's say a 3D printing business approached me and asked me how much I charge for a website. These are the steps I follow. Find out if the business has an existing website. Analyze their competitors and improve on what they are doing. See if the business has active AdWords campaigns. See how the business ranks on Google, in other words, SEO. See if the business has social media profiles and how their engagement is. And the final two are the most important. Find out how much the average 3D printer costs. Find out how many printers the businesses sells every month on average. With this information, I'd be able to figure out if I can really make an improvement in the sales of this business and I'd know exactly how much to charge for the project. So if the business sells an average of 10 3D printers every month at an average of $2,000 each, that equals a total of $20,000. After doing my investigation into the business and calculating that I could potentially increase sales by 30% each month, it then equals an extra three sales per month or $6,000. You mentioned to the prospective client that you believe you could at least increase their sales by three extra printers per month. But even if you only work on two extra sales per month, it adds up to $48,000 per year. Therefore, charging the client $6,000 to $8,000 once or for the website to potentially increase their sales by almost $50,000 in one year is a no-brainer. You get paid a good amount and they see the potential value behind what you are doing. If this method is new to you, it may sound a bit confusing or you may have a lot of practical questions running through your head. It's important to mention that what is different in this pricing approach is that you are talking the business owner's language, which is sales. You are not talking about how many hours the website will take you, the number of pages it will have, and the technologies you'll use, and things like that. Please also read an article I wrote on the topic of hourly billing versus value-based pricing, as it does complement what we're discussing here today. You can go to the Study Web Development blog to find out more information. I know this might still be a lot to understand, so I've answered three main questions I receive about this topic. How can you guarantee that the business will get more sales? It's nowhere near a guarantee and you should never guarantee results unless you can pull it off. So how can you be sure that the business will get more sales? The bottom line is that experience does help in knowing how you've helped previous clients with similar issues achieve success. But if you feel confident you can increase their sales, you need to use that confidence in your proposal. If you don't think you can increase their sales, don't take on the project. What if I only know how to make websites? Ideally, you should be combining your web development with digital marketing skills like SEO, AdWords, online advertisement, etc. to help the business achieve more sales. A good looking website won't get more sales, but if you combine a conversion centered website with effective marketing, this can equal more sales. And again, just to reiterate, I'm not talking about you know, a full-time job or anything like that. I'm purely referring to freelancing and generally with a focus being on web design or front-end and offering services like that. In concluding, I want to mention that this is a big topic to discuss. It requires confidence and getting out of your comfort zone. You need to be willing to accept rejection and failure along the way. 
please also feel free to comment below and ask me any questions or email me directly and I'll provide more clarification where I can. And lastly, thank you for watching this video. I hope it has helped you better understand this topic.